willing. Uh, I think we need to go back into a little bit of history, right? Uh -huh. To uh, learning from what happened to other religions mm -hmm. within the U.S. outside or prior to Islam, right? Okay. And we see that what I call the westernization of any religion. And they become, or they translate it, or it becomes more of something that they can uh, monopolize, right? Which they can profit off of, right? Correct. And nowadays, like, Muslims are trying to ask for representation, right? But I don't think we're being represented in a good way. Uh -huh. We're being represented in a way that they want us to be, to look like. Their version or their image of Islam. Versus, uh, which again fits the agenda of westernizing Islam to fit a need that fulfills or becomes subservient to capitalism or liberalism or whatever ism it is that it's trying to uh, subdue. And Islam is, Islam is made to encompass everything, to overrun everything, to rule everything. So basically what you're telling me is these people on the other side of the pendulum, on the left, Muslim activists on the left, are basically doing copy and paste, uh, not copy, sorry, cut and paste of what they like and don't like and create their new version, basically. They don't realize that they're being used in the manipulation of creating or westernizing Islam to fit another agenda. But when you have activists in the Muslim community, especially in New York, they come out and they say, if you don't vote Democrat, we question your Islam, I started having alarm bells because the Democratic Party and Islam don't go together. Democrat Party is pushing, for example, the LGBTQ stuff. Mm -hmm. They push, for example, uh, uh, basically abortion, which is against Islam. They push so many things that is against Islamic values. And, and so, so, yeah, I, th I think there is, uh, again, the two extremes. You're talking about two extremes, right? Yes. O outside of Islam, the U.S. itself has the two extremes. The Correct. extreme that's very strict, where it's yeah. like, you don't have a right to do anything in terms of abortion, right? Yeah. You don't have a right to kill anything, okay. right? Uh, versus Islam lays some down, some guidelines with that. Like, okay, you have three months to make that decision. Right? Three and months. It, and then it depends on the method, because that's okay. when the life becomes. That's a certain method that says you have three months, right? Okay. Uh, because that then it's a lie. Right? Yes. If you haven't made up your decision in three months, then obviously something wrong with you, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, again, uh, if the mother's life is in danger, the child's life in danger, Islam can is, is for life, it's pro-life, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, versus the other extreme, again, outside of Islam, is like, okay, well, my body, my right type of thing. Uh, and so, uh, just as in, in America, it, it has an extreme of both, and Islam actually creates balanced solution to every single problem not just that America has but every single Western society or Eastern. But what I find more concerning is we have Shuyu in the West and in general across the Muslim world that they're just like I haven't seen any time in history where, where the, the scholars are quiet on some issues like for example homosexuality the, 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 the freaking I don't know how to explain to you the, the, the economy the abortion the other, there are so many issues that the scholars are silent on. They have to get involved and tell us what, what the Muhammad ﷺ said, not add their own take. So th that's the thing. I don't think, if anything, I don't think they're silent. Like I've heard a lot of them talk about these issues, some in uh, uh, in the right way, in uh, the right context of okay. what the religion actually preaches, yeah. and some in their own watered down version uh, which were under fire, I don't want to put any names out there, yeah. but some were under fire recently uh, in the past couple of two, three years for watering down Islam and uh, ex essentially making halal what Allah forbade, right? So, which is so my question, does that in a, in a, in a, in a we're not going to say, you know, if these people are people of Kufar or not, we're not qualified for that. Isn't it kind of a little bit of shirk? Because in the Quran it says they took the, the Jews and the rabbis took their rabbis and their and their priests as lords, and then the one Jew, a Jew said we don't do that. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded, "Didn't you, the rabbis and the priests make what Allah made halal haram and what Allah made haram halal?" No, it's not. It's not talking about them becoming gods, but basically they, they took the words and the sayings of these priests or their leaders yeah. above the word of God. Okay. Right. Um, so in terms of kufr, right, yeah. like I, I give a, a big khutbah about this, like yeah. th there's three definitions of kufr. Okay. 
The first is disbelief, uh -huh. right? Like disbelieving, in, or so, sorry, associating partners with Allah. So like you go in to worship a statue, right? It brings you that's, no benefit. That's the that's common the, definition. That's the, everybody's like, oh, shirk is this, right? Okay. Kufr is the York Catholic, right? Okay. But kufr also means disobedience. Uh -huh. Like Iblis believes in God, he believes in the Day of Judgment, he believes in everything that we believe in, or he believes in, he sees the prophets, he sees the angels, but he's, he's a kafir because he disobeyed Allah. Allah gave him a command to prostrate, kufr an umri rabbi, he disobeyed the command of his Lord. So the word kufr here means also disobedience. So if you come and you're commanding what Allah has forbidden, you're a kafir, you've disobeyed Allah. Okay. The third meaning of kufr is ungratefulness. Allah always uses the word kufr synonymous with shukr. Right? And if you are grateful, then I will surely increase you. And then the opposite of shukr is kufr. So here it means ungratefulness. So kufr has three meanings. Either that you are disassociate partners with or associate partners with Allah. And a second meaning is uh, ungra uh, ungratefulness. Right. The third is disobedience. Okay. And the majority of people nowadays fall in uh, uh, apparent disobedience. Now, some of the scholars said, well, apparent disobedience. Like, for example, if I'm, in, I'm neglecting my salah, I know I'm doing wrong and I'm lazy, that doesn't really apply to me. But if I know... Do like, on purpose. Like, like not, not even on purpose, but like saying I don't have to salah is not obligatory I don't have to do that that's okay. a big red flag then you're 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 not following Islam anymore you're worse than Iblis right in that context so I think in terms of like the Islam and homosexuality has a very clear stance I don't care who I don't care if your name is to be clear we do not hate to be clear we do not we do not hate homosexuals we do not hate them but but Islam is very clear look it's a sin just like any sin whether yeah. you're fornicating whether you're doing any wrong, yes. right? Islam has capital punishments. I'm exactly. not here to defend anybody, right? Correct. Islam has capital punishment Correct. in terms of uh, these things. Uh -huh. We live in a different society, right? In a Western society. They have their own rules to govern themselves by, uh -huh. right? So, again, when we're talking in context, there's yes. everything, right? Yes. In Islamic government, Islamic law will be applied. Correct. Uh, in a Western society that doesn't we have to follow, follow their laws and their regulations. Listen, yeah, yeah, you, you, the Sharia says that to do that anyway. Do you? Right? Yes. You want to do, you want to go sleep with a tree? Yeah, if that makes you happy. <laughs> and you're, again, from an Islamic perspective, Al Amr bil Maruf and Al Nahi and Al Munkar is a wajib upon the Muslim. Commanding good and forbidding evil, and the Prophet said it in three degrees that you commend good, the, 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 the strong believer does it with his hand and the weak, and less than that the is mouth, the one who uses his yeah. mouth. And, and the rest is low. The, the rest is, is at least feel bad. And that's the least amount of faith. Yeah. Now you have people doing the opposite. So that means they have no faith, okay. right? Islam is not just a label like, you know, just like Christianity or Judaism or any other religion where, you know, you're born Muslim. Islam has a meaning, right? Correct. And as we, we talked about the word Muslim means submission to God, right? Islam means submission. It's Islam in Arabic. Islam means submission, yes. so, you know, to submit. And that's why I don't say Islam is a new religion. Yeah. Every single prophet said, submit your will to God. That's the commandment, the Correct. first commandment. O sheep of Israel, your Lord is but one Lord. Worship Him and submit your will to Him. That's the commandment in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, right? Very simple. And the word submission is in Arabic, is Islam. And we don't translate that word. And when we don't translate it and we take it as a label, we think like, oh, I could do whatever I want. I'm just an Americanized version of Islam. No, no, no. If your beliefs and your traditions and your teachings go against Islam, you're supposed to stop these things. Yes, everyone has their own transition into things. Uh, you know, maybe you have bad habit that you're trying to overcome. That's fine. But that's not to say, well, no, because I'm having a hard time accepting this as a fact or because I don't want to give that up, that I'm going to, Islam has to accept me as I am. No, no, no. There, there's Islam and you will accept Islam as it is or you will leave it as it is. Because in the religion, we are the slave, almost the masters. We yeah, have to follow yeah, Allah yeah, says yeah. at the end of the day. I People think, struggle, but and then we have to accept it's Allah's religion, not yours. Exactly. Yeah, it's God's religion. Either you obey God. Or you, you want to do whatever you want, which uh, liberalism is a different thing, right? Which, exactly. Which follows what I what I believe to be the will of the Antichrist to the Dajjal, right? His manifesto says, do what thou will. Versus any religion, right? No matter what book you pick up, it has self-discipline, self-control within it. 
any religion, any text, because they're essentially the same one, right? Uh, at some point, they were distorted. The, the Bible, the Torah. The, 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 even the, I will go back to even Hinduism, right? The Bhagavad Gita? Yeah, yeah, the Bhagavad Gita speaks about one God. They just, over time, they've taken each attribute of God as, we as, a, as a different God, oh, right? It's like Greek mythology, right? You have Zeus as like the father God, and then like everybody else is so obeys that one God, essentially yes. is afraid of that one God. Yeah. The same thing in Hinduism, right? And God says that they've taken the angels as gods without, yeah. right? And you see that what God says, like there's an angel for the water, right? That's in charge of the water. That's like Poseidon. In a way, yeah, yeah. Right? So they've taken Poseidon or the angel of... And they're going to a God. Yeah, essentially, uh, right? Yeah. So you see how like they differentiated or deviated into these sub different religions. So God says that there's only one God yeah. and none of these angels can do anything without his command or his will. So going with the basic idea, why do we see if Islam is very clear on certain issues? Yes. Whether it's homosexuality, abortion, whatever, Islam uh -huh. is clear. Why do we have some Muslim activists uh, in the community saying that certain things, like if you don't vote for a certain political party or if you don't are, are with this issue, you are extremists. You are I think, ISIS. I, or think that, I think they're the extremists. In what, like, like in what they're, sense? They're, they're, an, they're a liberal extremist because one, they lack the education about Islam to speak about it. Okay. They have clearly not read the Quran most likely, yeah. right? And if they did, I don't think, sorry, the English translation is not the Quran. Exactly. It's an English, it's Matthew, Luke, and John, right? We're doing the same mistake. The Quran is in Arabic, and if you can't comprehend it in Arabic, you should not be speaking about it. But nor its legislation, nor its laws. It's very clear. Okay. okay, correct. Like have, a, you, you don't go to a doctor. I don't just put on, wear the white suit and suddenly <laughs> I'm a doctor and I'm giving my own opinions about what's right and wrong. No, no, no. Stay within your lane. Stay within your field, right? And speak about things that you only understand. It's great that you're an activist, that you're fighting for what is right. But if you if your own compass is broken, you don't know where you're going. It's don't, like, don't give me directions. I go with what Sheikh Akram says. Sheikh Akram, he says, it's yeah. just like the doctors, if, if you're sick, you don't go to a Sheikh, you go to a doctor. Right. Okay, now when it comes to the spiritual sickness, you go to the Sheikh. But when it comes to political parties, when, uh, when uh, anybody, like let's say for example, Akram, say, if you don't vote Republican, you are, I question your Islam. Or if you don't vote Democrat, I question your Islam. Okay. What the hell is this? Where did this come from? So again, is, I, again, I think they're fitting, going back to what I said in the very beginning, that they're fitting the agenda. Now I wonder which side they're really on, right? They're, they're fitting the agenda of what the West wants Islam to look like, right? And this is why I say no representation is better than bad representation. Why? So why? Give us an example. Uh, like Ilhan Omar, right? <laughs> Clearly, right? Uh, her, because she openly stance, supports homosexuality yeah, and all this stuff. You're not yeah. a Muslim. If you openly. You're not a Muslim? No, 100%. If you openly. This is the meaning of kufr, what we just uh, talked about. Okay. If you openly disobey and command what Allah has forbidden, you're not a Muslim. For example, uh -huh. can I say liquor is halal? No, it's halal. As a Muslim? No. No, I'm saying no. Then, I'll, then I'm either saying Allah's wrong or the Quran is wrong or both because uh -huh. they're the same. Okay. Right? And I'm saying I'm following my own religion now. Okay. Right? It's very clear. There's no debate about this subject. So are you saying, so let's say I come so out. Can I say salah is not obligatory? No. No, then I'm it's a kafir. That's part of the five pillars. I'm a kafir. Yeah. So what is the difference between any prohibition that Allah has prohibited uh -huh. and I'm making it halal? What is the difference? Nothing. So using that logic, if you look at the other Muslim yeah. countries, for example, in some Muslim countries, let's be real, alcohol is legal, a lot of stuff that's haram is legal, so look, Allah says, وَمَنْ لَا يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أُنزِلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ الْكَافِرُونَ And whoever judge, does not judge by what Allah has sent down, they are the disbelievers. This is not talking to me and you. Yeah. It's talking to the Hukam. Yeah. In, in meaning like the presidents, the governor. So if you look at how many Muslim countries are there, do they, judge by the, they, do they judge by the Quran? Yes, they're Muslim. They, their Sharia, their governance, isn't the Aqidah of the Quran. They are not Muslim. They might be a Muslim majority country, right? But That's politically, they are not. Right, exactly. This is the words of Allah. Don't come after me. Go read the Quran. Wow, man. I'm, I, I'm getting shockwaves right now. Yeah. Yeah, so my question is this then, because since the 1980s yeah. until 2000, until like 2000, ever, ever since ISIS ended, 2018, we, we only saw one extreme. Uh, which ISIS are you talking about? Huh? Israeli Secret Intelligence Service? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Israeli Secret Intelligence Service. <laughs> ISIS made by Israel, guys. Remember, yeah. made by Israel. Why did yeah. ISIS attack Israel? I'm still waiting. Question mark. Uh, 
politics. Yeah, anyway. If you're too dumb to realize the difference of whose agenda they're playing, then uh, you're the problem. But my question is this, you know, we've been dealing with one, we've seen on the television screen one form of extremism. Look, like But I the see. other side has been quiet, like we didn't see it, but now it's becoming more and more. Why, why yeah. did the West spend billions of dollars on media of false propaganda to make Islam look bad? In what ways? And we still take the same, like we know CNN, Fox, and all these channels lie. Like we, everybody knows. Of course, this, that's common sense. Right? <laughs> but then when it comes to speak about Muslims, it's like, yeah, they're speaking the truth. Like, how stupid are you? <laughs> For sure, you know someone's a liar, yet when they're speaking about certain things, you're like, yeah, 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 I guess I trust them because if I don't, they're gonna label me as something bad. Yeah. And who Allah cares? Says, <laughs> yeah. You fear them. Yeah. It is Allah who should be feared the fear. Exactly. I don't need you to accept me. I'm very, I'm, I, do, I don't need any of you to accept my beliefs. I don't need any of you to validate. I'm not, I'm not gay. I don't need anyone's approval to validify my gayness. <laughs> yeah, and if I was gay, right? Uh, uh, I, I'm you. confident in what I believe yeah. with or without your consent. That okay. is the difference between hypocrisy and truth. Speaking of hypocrisy, I have a question. Yeah. How come in America or in, 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 in uh, Western Europe, you know, the Jewish community, for example, they're able to stand up and defend Talking about the religious Jews, the other black Jews. Sorry, start over. Okay, so the Jewish community in the West, in America, in uh, England, in in Germany, they have their own institutions, and they're able to defend their religion openly and practice their religion openly to the maximum. And I think that's because the Orthodox Jewish community, for example, that they stand up for their religion and they say, "This is what our religion says, and we're going to live by the, our religious uh, our religion." Well, in, in in the West, the Muslim community or some parts of the Muslim community, they are compromising. Like for example, like uh, which, if, if a Jew is discriminated in the, in, in, the, in the West, it's a big deal. But when a Muslim is discriminated against, because the, the, these organizations, I say, in our community, they are not, uh, which we call that, okay, in a soft, nice way. Some of these organizations aren't pushing Muslim rights because they are not showing the full picture of Islam, how it's supposed to be shown. Look, if anybody, if any of these mashayikhs are speaking the truth, they'll be in jail. Or, yeah. Like in Egypt, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In, 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 in here. If, yeah. if, the reason they're allowed to speak is because they're given a version of Islam that fits the, the agenda that the West wants to allow, essentially, right? We fail to understand that Islam is under attack both politically, economically, economically and militarily, physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and philosophically. And this has been happening before this generation, this, this ignorant for generation was born. For the last 200 years. Yeah, yeah. For, forgive me. Yeah. Uh, the, World War I was about the destruction of the Ottoman Empire, right? And World War I and World War II were about and the wars that are going on right now are about the the realigning or remapping of Muslim lands. Right? We're seeing uh, it. taking Iraq, taking Syria, and making them into smaller countries. They could call it war on terrorism, war on. I call it theft. No, excuse me, it's a war of terror. That's it's correct. No, no, war no, no. of terror. It's theft. It's just theft. Yeah. I'm going into your land. I don't care what propaganda Plundering I use. Plundering your resources, yeah, yeah. taking I'm your gold, like they did in yeah. Iraq and then Libya and then Syria. It's theft. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're not talking about the people that are being used, sadly, who, like the soldiers, right? That have no idea. They think they're fulfilling some sort of... Some sort talking of, about the presidents, the vice presidents, the, the generals. I'm talking about bigger than that. I'm talking about follow the money. Uh -huh. right? Who are the people that you can't speak up against? Oh, yeah, yeah, Voltaire. If that, you want to know who's uh, in control, ahem, 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 ahem. No, I, th I yeah. think you should, you just were mentioning a group of people, right? Yeah. What, who, what, Wall Street is what, exactly? Uh huh. Isn't that the economy of the world? Uh -huh. And who runs that? And right? the billionaires. And why, why is the representation of Wall Street the bull? Mm -hmm. Think about that. Here's another quote I want to say. It's an interesting quote. Uh -huh. If you give a person a gun, he'll rob a bank. Give a man a bank, he will rob the world. Okay. So basically, if you look at the history, basically, if you control a country's bank, you control their government. Look, you, I, I don't need to say this. You yeah. can go look, watch Jewish rabbis speaking about this. They're anti-Christ. They, their opinions will help them rule the world or uh -huh. enslave the world through them through an economic basis. They say this. Yeah. Not Muslims, not Christians. Jewish rabbis from Israel, they're talking about this. When they, there's videos about what, who's their Messiah, right? And going back to that, that their Messiah is essentially the same Aqidah the same understanding of liberalism. Do what thou wilt, right? Making this. Do you think your liberalism destroyed the Christian West? Because if we go back three, four hundred yeah. years, mm -hmm. and we look at American life or Amer mm -hmm. even British life, see the West always complain about people wearing hijab. 
Don't they know that Maryam alayhi salam wore the hijab? If Maryam alayhi salam was alive. Not even a hundred years ago, women, Christian women wore In hijab. England, there was a video. In here. <laughs> oh, in America too? Yeah, yeah, Christian women wore hijab. It's, it's not, the issue isn't really Christianity or uh, any of these. There's a man you guys should look up called Albert Pike. Yeah. And he has a, Albert Pike died in the 18... 90s, like yeah. towards before the 1900s. before World War One, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and he wrote a plan called the uh, World Three World Wars, World War One, Two. Wait, 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 wait! Did I just hear three World Wars? Yes, the one that's happening right now. Wait, there's a World Three World War happening right now. The one that's what are you doing? All that's going. On, okay, that's a different yeah. topic. Yeah, but yeah. what you're seeing right now is yeah. everybody choosing whose side they're going to be on. Correct. Politically. Okay. okay. Like. Uh, they're, they're drawing out the map, okay. but there is a World War Three that st started a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> people are you, not wars take years, right? At some point, right? Yeah. To, and some uh, it hasn't reached its escalation point where everyone is involved. Yeah. But it's, it's it will reach it at some point. Yeah, yeah, the nukes will start flying by. Anyway, if you look up Albert Pike's Three World Wars, he discusses how World War One will. And it, I mean, Allah's the best of planners, but yeah. this guy. Is also a Masonic. Uh, it, was, it was Masonic. Yeah. Right. Freemason. Uh, basically. Freemason. Yeah. Uh, and this, he was known to be that. And he, they talked about how they're going to start World War One, World War Two, and how they're going to use World War Two to put the Jews back in Israel. This is in the 1800s. 1890s. 1890s. So go back. Yeah. They basically planned the next century. Essentially. Yes. So whatever happened the last hundred years, the, the, the Holocaust, everything, Israel, every this is all planned. If you don't believe me, go look it up. The destruction of the Ottoman Empire. Everything. Yeah. So my question is this. Let's go back a little bit. Because I remember even during Sultan Abdul Hamid's time, one of the bravest sultans in our uh -huh. history, he was dealing with this problem. People were like, oh, we want freedom. We want this, we want that. And he was dealing with these, acti these activists. We, in reality, we know that they were being uh, lobbied by the British and mm -hmm. so on. He said, what is freedom? Is it, because it, it, you're gonna be, you have to be enslaved to something, right? Mm -hmm. Are you really free? Because in the West today, people are enslaved to their desires. They're enslaved to money. They're ins they have so many gods. They, yeah. The one God has been replaced by so many Look, other idols. You can't, you can't cure someone who doesn't think they're sick. Yeah. You need to understand that, right? Yeah. You can't cure someone who doesn't think they're sick. Okay. And that's the thing, they won't tell them that they're sick because they keep going to these doctors, psychiatrists, therapists, right? Because the, the, the consequence of following your, forgetting God from your life is yeah. depression, yeah. essentially, right? Basically. So they're, the suicide rates will only go higher, depression will only go higher. Theft, crime. Crime will go, because people are immoral. And if you're doing everything, if you become your own God. Become an animal. Say, yeah, yeah. And as I say, unless you live in a room by yourself, then maybe you have freedom, right? But even then, if you live in a building, then your freedom might override someone else's because you're too loud, right? Yeah. There's some sort of uh, restrictions on your freedom, no matter what. You can't just go around as fast as there's rules. There's always rules that you For have to example, on this road here, you can't go 100 miles an hour. You can't even drive. And say freedom. And say freedom. You can't even there's, drive. There's, I need there's right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. You yeah. can't yell fire, right? Yeah. And and there's hypocrisy in everything that they preach. Everything in their human rights, in their freedom talks, in, in, in every single law they have in place, right? Would you say that the West is a free, free society? Like in free society, in the sense you could say whatever you want, do whatever you want, no consequences. Give an example. Okay. Because people think you're a conspiracy theorist, and I, gonna, I can't yeah. say what I want, but they could say whatever they want about Islam. So, give me an example. What we can't we say, for example? Yeah, like, like they, they say whatever they demonize Islam, but we can't say anything. About their country or Judaism, for example. Uh -huh. we're talking about, isn't that limitation of speech? Uh -huh. so Why is for example, only, yeah. being blacklisted on Canary Mission, ahem, ahem. Uh, black, being blacklisted, uh, being called anti Semitic because you are saying the truth, for example. When it comes to Islam, no problem. You are just saying the truth about yeah, Islam. It's freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. Then, right, right. You want to insult Muhammad them, it's, it's okay. Freedom of speech. But if you insult Ada Turk, if you insult Bush, if you uh, uh, yeah. insult Obama, you are a traitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you go to jail. So, yeah. so exactly, right? Or you speak about the corruption that's happening uh, around you, then something is wrong with you, 
Yeah. If you don't fit the agenda that they're preaching, then it's no longer. I want to go more speech. deep than this. Should people who are religious, doesn't matter if you're Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Hindu, should people be concerned about putting their kids in public school? Because I've been seeing stuff for the last couple of I'm years. A big drag advocate. queen, sorry, drag yeah. queen, uh, homo teaching homosexuality, homosexuality, teaching sexuality at a young age. So my, it, it, it reached a point even in Florida, the most Republican state, the most conservative state, said you cannot talk about these things unless they're in fourth grade. So I'm concerned. Because when I was growing up in the public school system, they didn't even touch these topics. Well, look, what what is religion? Mor morality. No, Moral no, code. no, no, no. Religion, religion is a belief. In, one of the definitions of religion is a belief in a deity. Yeah. But also, it's a way of life, right? Yeah. So your way of life is so and so, right? So atheism is a religion. That's just your way of life. Uh huh. You have chosen to not believe in anything. That's your religion. Well, what is the belief of atheism? Maybe it's just there yeah. is no God. What are, you're misunderstanding. What? Religion, yes. it means a way of life that you chose to live by. Correct. Right? Whether, so atheism is a religion because okay. that's the way. You chose not to believe in a deity. Okay. You chose to live your life nilly-willy. Yeah. On your whims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your religion. Okay. That's the way of life you have chosen to live Interesting. By. Okay. Right? So when you understand that, you realize that everybody has a religion. Okay. Right? There's many religions. So are you saying in practice, the West is an atheist religious society in yeah. that sense? And again, going back to Albert Pike because he uses liberalism to fight Christian and, he, and they succeeded in basically... They, that's their plan. It hasn't happened. Yet. No, but if you but look at yeah, the West I mean, in yeah. practice, for only 4% of people in England they go to have church. They're, they're fighting it out right now. That's the liberal versus the democratic that we're seeing. I mean, uh, conservative versus... Conservative, sorry. But don't you think they're kind of winning right now? Look at the school system, look at uh, ab abortion, look at the media. I mean, pornography, I mean, there's so many issues. Yeah, go, going back to that, actually, yeah. because you've asked the question about the education system. Yeah. So, like, I'm homeschooling, right? Like, homeschooling is going to be an option, I think. How? That, How would you educate? I mean, people are going to say... There, there's a very good talk on ICNA about that, like, the past ICNA event. Yeah. They, had, they had a seminar on homeschooling, homeschooling okay. people that have been doing it. Uh, Texas is a good state to homeschool in New Jersey and so on. And you kids don't waste time learning garbage information, honestly. Outside of homosexuality and all this stuff. And the English classes and the math there's, classes there's and the retarded stuff. There's a lot of repetitive topics that are being discussed in school. It's like every every year, black people are slaves. Black people are slaves. Yeah, get it. Yeah, get the point. I get the yeah. point. Yeah, exactly. Right? Up until you're 24, you're wasting time. Honestly, like every kid, it's boring. It's dull. It's, uh, it's not it's even even economically wise. All this technology, like for example, instead of teaching kids in the 70s, they used to teach kids prepare them how to be a plumber, electrician, teach them a skill, yeah. and then they would go in, in, outside and do that skill. Instead, they would, they, people, we have people doing. We have a gender studies department. It's basically, stuff that, that, that doesn't translate. We have freaking well, pronouns. All this stupidity, right? Like if we say that that's a religion, your belief is a religion. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And we're not allowed to preach religions in school. Yeah. If you if we're in school just to learn trade skills, yeah. leave it at that. Your beliefs are your beliefs. Why do you have to force your belief on top? And that's the hypocrisy again, right? Because you they want to transform your kids you, and they want to take I, them away from their religion. Right. I yes. can't talk about Islam to the kids or Christianity or Judaism, but you have to preach your way of life that you're confused about. So you're still depressed as hell. You're suicidal. You haven't figured out the solution to your broken compass. You want to break my kids compass that i'm trying to set it straight you know what i mean so get fix your own lives before you preach it to others don't you please. think if we look at the politics in this country democrats yeah. are more, well i'm not going to say which political party is better because I, I, both are garbage to be honest uh -huh. but when it comes to governing as states like new york or, or or california that these lawmakers they have destroyed the the, 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 the generations that have passed and the current generations with them pushing uh, basically, we don't know what, what, what anyone is anymore, male, female, uh, dinosaur, helicopter pronouns. Look, man, look, when, you, when, you, when you're born, uh, what are they going to, what are they going to, you're male or female. When you go to a hospital because you, you're sick, I dare you to say, you're, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a tree. They're going to be like, well, I, can't, I don't know what dosage to give you because if I give you the wrong dosage, you'll die. Yeah. <laughs> You know, because male and female bodies can handle different... Exactly. So, so a doctor, you're still male and female no matter what you think you are. Exactly. Whether you're a pebble or a tree or a cloud or... This I is am minor. What about drag queens? Like, for example, teaching kids, like a man wearing like woman... Boy wearing a woman's clothes and freaking... We have parents even... Do, some parents doing this and they're abusing kids. 
I mean, this is this is alarming. How come? Again, if uh, uh, we're 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 repeating the same thing, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, they'll realize sooner sooner or later that this will lead to their own destruction. Yo, look, America is destroying itself by itself. That's all I could say. Let them keep doing what they're doing. Every other country is going to step on them. China. Right? That's, that's what it's looking like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, we were seeing every, it worldwide. China, Russia, they have zero respect. Yeah, you don't even know what you are. America is like, we're, <laughs> we're the market. <laughs> we're the market. You know, I mean, there's issues with the other things as well, right? And, and Islam will always prevail. Yeah. Look, a man's law will never supersede God's law. They could try to figure out, and that's why God's letting him. He's like, okay, you think that's going to work? Go ahead, try. Right? We're forgetting that God, God's patient. And, you know, he's forgiving. Uh, but just like the nation of Lut was flipped over, <laughs> you know, I always said, why does God need to punish us if we're killing ourselves? I mean, just look at all the shootings that's yeah, happening yeah, yeah. and all the economic woes yeah. this country is yeah, dealing with. Yeah. God doesn't need to send them punishment. He's already making us punish ourselves. It's already right now. America let it, let it the American government, unfortunately, it's destroying this country and people's livelihoods and so on yeah. and so forth. I would like to go to foreign policy now. We see all on the media about Ukraine, 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 and Ukraine is an independent country. They have the right to choose the leaders that they want. But then we don't see anything about Pakistan, for example, where Imran Khan was overthrown. Now listen, everybody has sins, right? When I say Imran Khan is an angel or he's a devil, that's up to the people to decide. But when an, the American government to kick out somebody because they're trying to, to have an Islamic economic system or trying to make the country more independent, this is, this is hypocrisy at its finest. Look, you, again, we're we're too busy watching TikTok videos, news outlets, and things like that to understand something that is very clear. It's a country trying to uh, control its power, affirm its power. And how do you do that? You make sure that everyone that comes in, in in whatever country is agreeing with your policies. That's that's re don't look too much into it. That's really what's going on, right? And it's. We gotta remember something. The dollar has has no value, basically, right? other other than its military purpose. And, and it's with, oil. With, with with Russia and China succeeding, and being strong militarily, that's a very great big threat to the U.S. Basically, the American so empire is coming they to an end. Have to, yeah, yeah exactly. And, and this is a country that's been in war since its existence. It was created two hundred twenty years. It was created on genocide. Let's not forget this. And it continued on genocide of different nations and the oppression of different nations, whether it's Haitian or Jamaican or Cuba, South American, Venezuela, or Egypt. Middle Eastern, yes. it's of the sucking of every single resource mm -hmm. to corrupting their own civilization. It's the Hunger Games. Like basically, they, they tell you in the movies, <laughs> like, and people are like, oh, that's a great movie, great movie, yeah. yeah. Or like the Avatar with the blue people, yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah, oh, like, <laughs> Probably like twice during the movie. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, it's so sad. Like, you but it's real life. It's, it's happening in real the life. Iraq War, yeah. bro. Like, I, Avatar was Afghanistan, Iraq. Yemen. Yeah, yeah. It was every single oppressed country. You see it. It's like we need that powder, right? Yeah. We need, or we need that rock. Yeah. You, know, you know, at the end of the day, and these soldiers think they're, you know, serving the country. Serving the country. Meanwhile, they're, they're serving, serving businessmen. They're serving the arms they're serving manufacturers. The bull. Yeah. They're going back to the bull. They're serving the bull in Wall Street. Pay attention. So, follow the money. So, what should the Muslim community in the West do? How should we fight back? Obviously, you uh, not, not physically, up. but like you know what I'm saying. Like, you should. Do, no, 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 no. You mentally. Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't subjugate yourself to anyone. Yeah. I don't need you to accept me. I don't. I have my beliefs. You have yours. Good luck. What right. should we do with Muslim activists who fall for the Democrat Republican? Okay, again, Muslim is not a label that you wear. Yeah. Muslim is an action. It's a verb. Yeah. Like a musalli, someone acting. Up. If someone's making salah, you call him a musalli. Yeah. If someone is submitting to God, he's a Muslim. Yeah. There's no disobedience and you call yourself Muslim. Especially if you're outwardly disobeying God yeah. and you're forbidding what Allah allowed and you're allowing what Allah forbids, you're a kafir. <laughs> you have disobeyed God openly. Don't expect me to call you amongst those who submit, mm -hmm. right? So, and as Allah says, well, you know, if they establish their connection mm -hmm. with God and in their charity, and basically they're amongst you, then they are brothers in faith. If you don't even do that, uh, go fix yourself. So let's say we have popular Muslim figures of lawmakers, right? They pray, Again, they do zakat, they but they say they support homosexuality openly. They say they, it's okay. They cannot. They cannot. 
They cannot. They cannot. I I don't know of any. The Prophet Allah says, "Qatilul ladina yatainuna fi din." Kill those who are corrupt in your faith. Do you think? So are yeah. these people not corrupt? I swear to God, if Omar was here, I swear by Allah, if Omar was here, he would have killed these people. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. These people themselves wouldn't follow Islam. Yeah. Uh, or they'll, they'll, they wouldn't even dare to say they're Muslims like they're doing now because they'll be scared. Yeah. Right? So, uh, no, no, no. Look, I don't care what you do. I don't care if you're if you're, if you're following whatever faith or whatever, but don't come to my uh, uh, like Islam. And try, and try to change it and force yeah, your values. Yeah, yeah. You have your own. Go, go do what you Can you imagine? I have a question for you. Why, why are you trying? Go be you. I have a question for you. This is hypocrisy. No, ever since the old uh, American left Afghanistan, Taliban has taken over. They, they, they are basically implementing the Sharia law. We have the American government and British government and media outlets complaining. Saying, oh my God, the woman in Afghanistan. Or, oh my God, look what they're doing. It's none of their business, number one. Number two, the, the, the Taliban are implementing the Islamic law. Again, I feel like us playing into their games, right? In, uh, these topics, right? Yeah. You have, uh, we, we talked about three ways they're attacking Islam, right? Um, physically, right? Which is it's like philosophical. Iraq, yeah. Afghanistan, Yemen. Syria, yeah. Yemen. Yeah. That's physical, yeah. right? You got CNN, Fox, every all these outlets. That's yeah. mental, yeah. right? Demonizing you, making you feel uh, constantly pounding you philosophically. Yeah, yeah. No, no, trying to make you feel ashamed and embarrassed of who you are and what you are, so you yeah. can give up your own values. Yeah, it's an attack, right? Yeah. Uh, and again, like I always say, like look at Bilal, right? How he he in said the middle, ahad and ahad when the rock was on top of the middle of, of like, mind you, in the desert, yeah. the rock was on his chest for days, yeah. and his his slave. Uh, Wait, you said days? Days. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like that's on his chest. Like, have you ever touched the rock in the desert? It's hot. Well, it's too hot. It's I can't. Yeah. You'll get burned. Yeah. Hey. So th these people, like, if you look at them the wrong way, these Muslims, they'd be like, off with the hijab, I'm embarrassed. Like, you don't, don't compare. Like, Allah says, uh, do you think we will not test you like those we have tested before you? And truly, Allah will know who's truthful amongst you from their from your oath and those who are lying, right? So this is a test from Allah just at the end of the day to know who's truthful in their oath and who's not. And you could clearly, those who give up their religion and throw it for the appeasement of this world. Allah says, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu he said the stories at the end of times, people will sell their religion for a cheap value. Like SubhanAllah, this world, it's not like they're getting million dollars to even like leave Islam or be ashamed of it. They're still depressed and subjugated to their societies and to the mental oppression. And Islam frees them from that. I mean, if we look at the arrogance of also in the school system, we have, they, they, they teach that we can from, come from apes also. Like, what do you think about this? They say we shouldn't bring religion into school, but they, they teach us, for example, that, you know, we came from hey, apes. science is a religion. I consider it to be a religion, right? It's not even science. It's not science. No, no look, like I said, going back to a way of life, right? Yeah. I think there is, a, there is science that Islam would agree with, okay. right? Which is the understanding of what is around us. Agreed, right? But then when you force speculations and opinions and our hypothesis Theories, food, like Darwin's theory, theory not theory. Darwin's fact, Darwin's right? theory. Okay. Like I always yeah. say, like we look, we say the earth has seven cores. We've never dug past the second or the first. Wait, we don't have we don't know? That's crazy. That's something for you to look up. Alright, yeah. What I'm saying is there's speculations. They could be right, they could be true, or maybe they're just saying based on um, bibl biblical values that Allah says he created seven earth. Uh, so they're saying it's seven layers. So maybe this is why I call science the plagiarist of God. They plagiarize God's words as though it's science. Like, oh, the universe is shrinking. Well, we already knew that. Shut up. Like, go sit down. <laughs> hey, like, it's like it's like, it's like the kid in the back of the class yeah. that wasn't paying attention. Yeah. And then they wake up like, oh, yeah. 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 It's, it's like, like okay, but suddenly he's given all the credit that he's discovered something that the Quran said. 400 years, 400 years ago. And most of these French philosophers that have come in the past have actually rewritten a lot of the Arab Middle Eastern work as their own, you know, and they take credit for it. But, uh, so what should or be... Or they, they dilute it or corrupt because it. Because you said Islam is being attacked three ways, economically, militarily, militarily, philosophically. In the West, what should Muslims do? What is, the, for example, you, you promoted the solution of homeschooling. What else should Muslims do? I said, hold on to your values. Don't, don't back down. Don't back down. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Right? Practice your religion freely, speak about it. Should we be like the Jewish community in the sense that 
we have our communities and we are a tight-knit community yeah, and we, need we to stop attacking invest our own businesses. We need to stop attacking each other, Yeah. right? And uh, we need to filter each other out. I know you're like, how can we filter each other out? Well, again, going back to Quran and Sunnah, right? What the Quran said, if you go with that, you're my brother. If you're preaching something that the Quran doesn't preach, you're not from the people of the book, right? Do you preach what the Quran preaches? Welcome. You don't? Uh, you can call yourself yeah. Muhammad ibn Kalb. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't care. Okay. Ibn Kalb. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> get yeah. away. Bro. Okay, so yeah. so to, to, to end, uh, to, uh, basically we have one more question and we'll, we'll end it. The, the, the West in the Muslim world right now, we, we see secularism being pushed in a lot of Muslim countries like Tunisia, Egypt, Lebanon. And in some cases they're succeeding. So for example, in Tunisia, it's, it's legal for a Muslim woman to marry a non-Muslim man. And we have all these problems. So how should Muslims in the Middle East respond? What should they, what should they do? Look, I full-heartedly believe that no matter what's gonna happen, nothing can be done unless the Mahdi comes. We can try, but he's the only one that unites and isn't afraid to speak the truth and uh, unsheathe uh, something. You know what I mean? Figure that out on your own. Yeah. So that's the only way. And he, uh, you know, right now, uh, over, like I said, look, man, we're, we're what is their Sharia? The Sharia of the West. So. Of the Sharia of the country. Is yeah. there a, what makes it a Muslim country? They, it does it? There's it's no not, features. It's not a, what is it? Constitution, democracy, blah blah blah. Dictatorship. Blah. Yeah, whatever. Right. Kingship. There's yeah. no kingship in Islam. And one There's more, only one king, and it is Allah. So get off your throne. And one more thing, because militarily, yeah. we talk about military. People call the Muslims extreme. When, when the United States. Used nuclear weapons to bomb Hiroshima and Again, Nagasaki. I'll, I'll just end this with, the, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. I don't need someone who's extreme tell me I'm extreme. I don't, like, say what, you, you know, the Prophet, so there was a so so woman so. Uh, who called him Muzamma. So his name is Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad means praiseworthy. So said, yeah. Muzamma means someone who's not praiseworthy. Correct. Right? So he's like, the companions are like, do you hear what she's calling you? She's calling you Muzamma. Yeah. He's like, oh, who's, who's Muzamma? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Muhammad. Like, who cares what they call you, bro? Yeah. Don't don't ent don't entertain idiots. Exactly. Don't entertain people. Don't give value to those who are seeking attention. Don't and you know the best thing you could do to someone who, who's trying to piss you off. Just play cool. Just chill. Let that will piss them off. They'll see that they can't break through you. So why are you entertaining them and fighting amongst each other and? Uh, playing into their games, their mental games and mental tactics or mental wars, whatever you want to call it. You're, we're playing right into their hands when we're doing that. So I feel like the best way is just like, you know, there's, a, there's an American saying, you know, growing up, it's like, take a chill pill. Yeah? Just chill. So let, the, let them talk. So the, this is how we're going to end this. I'm going to say we need scholars with a bigger backbone, we need activists with a bigger backbone and to not like sell our, our dean for, for, for pebbles. Because what do we gain? By saying, for example, yeah. homosexuality nothing, or abortion, nothing, exactly. So we should stand by our values. Stand by your values, like the Jewish community and the religious Christian community, and that's it. Yeah. Why you have to sell your deed? And uh, at the end of the yeah. day, the people that are uh, subjugating themselves to these ideologies and think they're being accepted end up being humiliated. Like just what's happening now. I don't know if you were aware of certain speakers being you know, I refuse to call them scholars yeah uh, students at knowledge students of knowledge at uh -huh. best you know especially when they charge six thousand dollars to come give a talk like <laughs> shut up go, go get a real job I'm sorry so like these people that are subjugating Islam to make us say like oh we're weak no I you weak just because you have no faith or little faith at that and you're making us look weak we don't need you as our image that, that's fully what I, what I believe. And Allah embarrasses them, you know? It doesn't matter if you have a million followers or two million followers, yeah. you're still an embarrassment. You know, there's a big sheikh and a fake sheikh in Pakistan that just committed suicide because he's using religion for self-worldly gain, you know? May Allah protect wow. us. Uh, All right, thank you guys. We're gonna see you guys in the next this episode. This was a little bit rough, uh, you know? Yeah. Do some reflections before you judge me. Yeah. Alright guys, we'll see you on the next episode of the Clash and Mesh podcast. I know this podcast is uh, this podcast is very dark, but we're here for to say the truth. We are not here. We are not here to uh, sell our values or entertain 
and the people on the top. We're only here. I would say I would say it's already dark. We're just trying to shed some light exactly. to what's already going on. The light's been off for a couple of years. Thank you and so, see you next time.